Hey gang, Tim here at Coral Electronics, and today we're gonna to make the perfect device to let you know what the weather's like around you and whether it's safe for you to ride your bike to work. So, it is raining today, and I reckon you're gonna be able to hear that effect inside this room. Hopefully the sound is still gonna come out great, but it does show off really well this neat little use of the Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi 7 touch inch display. At a quick glance at this, you're gonna be informed of the local weather and we'll let you know if there was any rain in your local area. As you can see today, there's a huge amount. You can also use the touch controls to view information anywhere on the globe. It is simple to create and just keep in mind, you're gonna be creating some API keys for the weather database services to access their information to this device. Accessing the information is gonna to be totally free the GitHub that did the hard yards of creating this can be found in the description. You can explore that at your leisure. Also, if you want an airplane tracker or a different style, super, super duper easy to set up weather tracker, I will show you how to do that at the end of this video. In front of me now is all the parts used to make this. A Raspberry Pi, in my case, I used a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, two gigabyte but this project is perfect for a lower powered Raspberry Pi if you have one hanging around. You will also need an SD card, a seven inch official Raspberry Pi monitor, a Raspberry Pi monitor display, as well as a mouse and keyboard for setup. My Raspberry Pi is gonna be connected through Wi-Fi, but you can also directly connect it to the internet through the ethernet cord. Now, we have a great tutorial online already about how to install this LCD correctly, so jump on there if you need. Otherwise, for me, it's gonna be time-lapse time. The general gist is to peel off the protective sheets of the acrylic, screw the two leg stand connectors, and then just like that, the physical part of the screen will basically be complete. You're gonna connect up some peripherals, slap in an SD card flashed with Raspberry Pi OS, and switch on that Raspberry Pi by plugging in a USB-C. So we will now open up the terminal using this button in the top left and typing in the following commands into the terminal to set up your Raspberry Pi weather station. The first line uses CD and will change our current working directory into the downloads folder. Next line we will type starts with git and clone. This is a method of targeting an existing repository of information and creating an exact replica of it on our machine. We will be cloning the Pi weather station created by Eric from the website GitHub. All credit to him. This may take a little bit of time to download, but less than a minute. Next line we'll use is another CD line, which makes the new Pi Weather Station our working directory. Having done that, the next line we will type uses a curl, which is another method of transferring data into your Raspberry Pi. This we're going to use to install node source JavaScript functionality to our Pi. This is also going to take a little bit of time, but less than two minutes. Then we're gonna type sudo apt install node.js and press Y when prompted. This is to double check we have absolutely everything we need in our Pi. Once that's complete, we're gonna type npm install. npm stands for node package manager, which lets us install Eric's JavaScript projects into our own project. This is gonna take a little bit of time to do, but once done, we're gonna have everything that we need. Then all we need to do is type npm start. Once you press enter on that final terminal command and see the following message below, all the terminal commands for this setup are complete. Likely your Raspberry Pi is gonna automatically open up the web browser with the URL localhost semicolon 8080. The scaffolding is all here now, so it's time to turn our attention to the API keys to fill this framework with the current weather data. So a good way to get to these websites for the APIs is to go to the article page, link down in the description, scroll down, and the web pages you will need are these three right here. Location IQ, Tomorrow IQ, and mapbox.com. So for each of these, you're gonna to need to create an account and you're gonna to need to authorize that account with your email. So once you've created those accounts, you're gonna be able to find access tokens or API keys. And they're gonna look like this. 
for location IQ, it's going to look like this for tomorrow IO, and it's going to look like this. I stored these and kept them all in a notepad file to easily copy and paste them in. Once that's complete and you click that save button in the bottom window, everything will be set up and good to go. A quick full screen and a little zoom in, and then you're good to go. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the data on the server side to accept a new API key. So give your setup around 15 minutes to be all ready. While all of this is occurring, you can do two extra things to make this whole experience better. Firstly, you can prevent the Raspberry Pi from going to sleep by disabling the screen blanking option. By default, the Raspberry Pi will blank the screen after 10 minutes without user inputs like a mouse wiggle or key presses. You can find this setting using the top tool button, going to the preferences, clicking on the Raspberry Pi configuration under the display tab. From here, select disabled. Do a restart and it will work perfectly. So if the Raspberry Pi restarts, to get that weather viewer to come back to normal, we're gonna type the following things into the terminal. We're gonna open up the terminal. We're gonna make it nice and big. We're gonna get straight into that same folder structure as we always do. We're gonna press enter, we're inside that folder structure and we're gonna type the following, npm start. And just like that, it's gonna open up that web browser and it's gonna be just how it was before it restarted. The next good thing to do is to make it so your cursor will disappear when not receiving mouse movements. This can be done very simply by clicking on this button in the settings. This is good to be set up anywhere now, keeping you up to date in this dynamic world that we live in. If you want more information, you say, we'll have two websites which you can check out using your Raspberry Pi screen, which don't require API keys to be set up. Windy.com can be full-sized and give you a whole different style. It's gonna provide less information, but be much quicker to set up. Or if you're into planes and helicopters, another great website to check out is flightradar24.com. Every single airplane in the air is recorded and data is displayed live on that website. That is everything you need to get up and running with a Pi Weather Tracker for yourself at home. So until next time, stay cozy.